What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and I'm finally back to uploading. We're gonna catch back up. First off, my week six battle against the uh, Ascension Ampharos run by Luxury Ball 13. I'll be sure to post his link in the description for his channel. Uh, I actually felt like I had a decent matchup going into this. I was worried about his Braviary and Mega Law Punny. Um, I was only worried about Mega Law Punny if I lost Venusaur and Togekiss. As long as I kept them alive, Mega Law Punny is not an issue. Um, I also I actually also expected him to bring either his Latias or his Amoongus. Granted, a uh, those both get smacked by Weavile pretty hard, so I figured he'd bring one for a little bit more defensive synergy, but he didn't. So. He didn't end up starting off with Braviary, and I decided to Mega Evolve and go for Synthesis. Uh, unless he had Choice Ban, and I was guessing that he was Scar since he led with it, he could not knock me out. Um, that was a little bit of a risk, uh, even a little bit unnecessary, I would say, looking back on it now. Um, but I gained some valuable info seeing that he is Choice Scarf. Uh, he doesn't U-turn any hard switches at the same time that I do, and I could have gone for a Bandit Outrage right here, and that actually would have been pretty good to 2 KO Swampert. But I really didn't want to lock myself into Outrage that early on. I didn't know if Lopunny had Power or Punch or something to set up. Uh, and of course Lopunny could just come back in, Mega Evolve, and then High Jump kick me in the face. So, didn't want to deal with that. Now as I go out into Venusaur this time on Magnezone, I can basically wall it out. I expected him to switch because the Hidden Power Fire was really obvious. But he gets the special defense drop on the uh, Flash Cannon, which is actually a pretty big deal. Because now I'm forced to switch out. He's allowed to Volt Switch and gain a ton of momentum here. And I would have much rather not seen him gain so much momentum in such a, a single move. If he hadn't hit that special defense drop, then basically I would have just stayed in there and hidden power fired him. And I wouldn't have lost our Manitan thinking that he was going to Flash Cannon again. Uh, but now that we've lost our Manitan, and we're a bit behind in this battle. My Venusaur isn't at full HP, so I'm gonna bring in Togekiss instead. I predict the switch back to Magnezone and go for Aura Sphere instead of uh, Air Slash. It actually does a fair chunk of damage. Um, at this point, I was still thinking that his Magnezone could outspeed my Togekiss, because I'm more bulky to make sure I can take on the Lulpunny instead of being fast to handle Magnezone. Because um, he does Volt Switch out. Cobalion actually takes that Volt Switch pretty well, and then it surprises me further by living the Psy Shock from Latias. Uh, I am able, able to get some pretty important damage off there by going for Iron Head, and that means that Latias is in the range now to either be Pursuit Trapped, or I can take it out with Miki here and go for a U-turn or a knockoff, basically. Because um, I had Miki with a Expert Belt for this battle. So, that was a good play. I ended up getting a crit on the U-turn. Didn't matter too much, though. Um, as I go back into Troop, he decides to go into his Reuniclus, and I was just going to put some damage onto him with Giga Drain. Really should have started going for Sludge Bombs from the beginning. Um, I wanted to get enough HP to live uh, Psychic. As long as he didn't have Life Orb, I could live the Psychic, but with Life Orb, it was a pretty big roll if I actually lived Psychic from that range of HP. And with Trick Room up, there isn't much that I can do, and that it really all just goes back to him putting extra damage on my Venusaur earlier and me making the bad play against Braviary and staying in. Because uh, my Venusaur at full HP can definitely live a Psychic from a Life Orbed Max Special Attack Municlus. So unfortunately, I'm going to lose this battle 0-5. Oh uh, spoilers, I guess. But because this battle... I, this kind of just started a, a bit of a losing streak for me here, actually. So, But that's okay, though. It was still a good battle to really get to know uh, Lux's team a little bit better. Now, since this is a short, short video, I'm going to go ahead and wrap team uh, week rather week seven into this battle video as well. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Now, in week seven, of course, I went up against the Edinburgh Knights, which are led by Blue Eyes Dogma. Of course, his link will be in the description too. Um, I and coming off of such a harsh loss with the Ascension Ampharos, I planned really, really hard for Blue Eyes. I bred a brand new Togekiss, I bred a brand new Weavile, and a new Rotom for this battle, actually. So, I wanted to have Togekiss with Baton Pass specifically to put a lot of pressure on his team. I expected a lot of switching between either Umbreon or Sylveon. He also had access to a Gliscor, so there could be some Baton Pass shenanigans in there. And uh, he also had access to Delphox and Flygon, so 
U-turn or taking away my items, things that I didn't really want to deal with. Uh, Rotom, of course, was a good thing to bring because he didn't have any ground types outside of Gliscor, and Gliscor basically gets punched in the face by Weavile, so I wasn't very worried about Gliscor. Uh, I decided to lead out with Cobalion just to ensure that my rocks get off. Well, I could have said that in a more appropriate fashion, but I wanted to use Stealth Rocks, and I wanted to also be able to taunt Bronze on if you let off with that. This is an offensive Cobalion, so I don't actually take the Sheer Force Life Orb Boosted Waterfall very well at all. But I didn't want to give him a chance to set up on me switching out, so I just went for Taunt. I could have just switched on into Venusaur, but I also didn't want him to predict that and go for Ice Punch before I Mega Evolve, so I figured it was safer to just stay in with Cobalion at that point. Uh, so also here I'm going to go ahead and go on into Rotom. Since I figured he's Life Orb, the best thing he can probably do is Aqua Jet me, and that won't KO me, and then I can hit him back really hard or even burn him. But I decided just the Volt Switch. This is the Choice Specs Volt Switch, and actually does a good amount of damage to Umbreon. Uh, now that I, I see him bring an Umbreon in this matter, I know that it's a special wall, and that means that his only move is probably Foul Play to hit me with, but I want to make sure I don't want to get anything on my, on my side of the field hit with a status move unnecessarily and uh, this is also a pretty good opportunity to mega evolve now between baton pass from togekiss and u-turn from darmanitan i figured it'd be a pretty good way to keep pressure up on his team what i didn't know is what a massive pain in the butt this umbreon was going to be throughout this battle i am able to knock off its leftovers which is nice and i figured here he would try to switch out into something in case i wanted to go for an offensive move and I was thinking, maybe Darmanitan is a good switch in now in case he also protects, but I didn't want to switch to Darmanitan if he did go for foul play. And he does go for foul play, which means that Togekiss is a much better switch. Uh, the Bronzong switching is pretty obvious here. I, I didn't really have any reason to not go for Baton Pass. Um, Togekiss isn't the great wish passer using Baton Pass, but it worked out really well in this battle. Here I'm able to switch immediately out and go into Darmanitan, and the only way that his Bronzong can handle Darmanitan is if he has Heat Proof on his Bronzong. Now considering that on my side, I had access to ground moves on a few different Pokemon, I didn't see him running Heat Proof. I definitely expected him to run uh, the Levitate. And so Flare Blitz is a pretty safe move to go for. Nothing on his team really wants to take it. Most of his members are at least two hit KO'd or one hit KO'd by it. And even for Alligator, which resists it, can't take another one. So I don't want to risk an Aqua Jet to the face, of course. We're going to get out of here because Aqua Jet has increased priority. That of course go before my Darmanitan, even though Darmanitan has higher base speed. Uh, and I do get to have the confirmation on Life Orb off of Aqua Jet, which is nice. But uh, Darmanitan would have not liked to take that. So that was a pretty good switch there. No reason to risk it. I did expect him to go back out into Umbreon just like he did before. But on the off chance that he went out in a Bronzong, I just wanted to go for a knockoff to see what Bronzong was holding. Uh, I, I guess I could have just double switched out back into my um, Darmanitan. Because then if he went for Ice ice Punch, then that would be a safe way to bring in Darmanitan too. And then he's looking at Life Orb Recoil damage there. But right here, he does go for a Wish and he is able to pass it out to his Lop Honey. Um... I didn't actually expect him to bring in Law Punny right here. I expected him to go out into his Bronzong again. So I actually went on to my Rotom, and this sucks because, of course, when he Mega Evolves, he gets the Scrappy ability, which will allow him to hit my Rotom even though it's a Ghost type with normal and Fighting type moves. Um, so that means in order to handle that, I have to go out into my Togekiss to take the possible return or the High Jump Kick. Uh, I was hoping that he went for High Jump Kick but he actually just goes straight for Fake Out, which is okay, I, I'd take less damage from Fake Out than I would return. Um, so that, that situation actually worked out pretty well overall. Here, once again, I expect him to go out in the Bronzong, so we're going to Baton Pass one more time, just like last time, this is a little bit of a repeat here, but that's what I need to do to stop him from setting up his Stealth Rocks. Uh, his only Pokemon that he has in the Pokemon that he brought to set up Entry Hazards is Bronzong, and Bronzong can also, can also do annoying things like uh, set up screens or uh, even set up a trick room and try to do a little miniature sweep. So I didn't want to deal with any of that. Especially something like Sylveon in a trick room. Definitely didn't want to deal with that. So it's important to keep the pressure on him. And that forces him to sacrifice Pokemon like he has to do right here with Feraligator. 
Now with all that being said, for Alligator being down is pretty important because he loses his priority user, and that means that my Darmanitan now has a little bit of free license on his team, and he no longer has any switch-ins for it. Uh, so I'm going to switch out of here just because I don't want to take a fake out or return if he decides to go for that. Venusaur can take either one of those very, very well, and I can actually take three returns with this particular build that I have on this troop. I have two different troops. I have a female one and a male one, one that I bred in reference to Nox letting me name it, or I let my friend Nox name it way back in, that was, I was at the start of 6th gen. So in here I make a horrible over prediction. I go out into Rotom expecting him to go out into Bronzong and he smacks me with a return. And then here I went into Fulham into thinking that I was scarfed and so I stayed in and he just hits me again. So I lost Rotom for no real reason there. I knew that Togekiss could take a hit, and I really should have put just a little bit more special attack on it to guarantee a one-hit KO with uh, Air Slash. Granted, if I had put that much special attack on there, definitely would not have been able to take the hits from La Pony as well, so kind of a trade-off there. Um, he's just going to keep on going for return at this point, and unfortunately I'm kind of forced to let several of my Pokemon take unnecessary damage. He wasn't sure if he could KO me there with the return. And so he ends up switching out in a Bronzong, and I just went for Synthesis. I was trying to get to an HP level where I would ensure that I could live um, two returns instead of just taking one and then getting KO'd by something else. Unfortunately, this puts me in a position where I, he can kind of set up the entry hazards no problem. And I expected him to set up Stealth Rocks, but he just goes straight for Psychic, which was a great move on his part because now my Darmanitan is below half HP, and he just can't use Flare Blitz as much. Now here I did expect him to go ahead and switch and I just wanted to hit something hard. I was really hoping he'd bring in Umbreon and sacrifice it, but he brings in Delphox, which I'm okay with that too because that means that's one less thing to hit Mega Venusaur. And Delphox doesn't even take a single Flare Blitz. Even with the Stealth Rock damage, it just completely wipes it out. And that's unfortunate. Uh, I take all that recoil damage, which is not good. But at the same token, Umbreon is here. I just went for a U-turn thinking that a Life Orb U-turn would KO Umbreon. And boy was I wrong, I should have just taken the double KO and gone for Flare Blitz. I think the recoil from Flare Blitz would have knocked me out too, but it would have been so nice to have Umbreon out of the way. Not only is it passing wishes around, but also the ability to go for foul play and hit my more um, offensive Pokemon is quite annoying. So since Umbreon is in here, I can't really bring in Weavile on a foul play because it'll do over 50%, most likely with Weavile's high attack stat, or it'll, it'll at least do a chunk, and then I also have Weavile with Life Orb, so I just don't really want to deal with that, so unfortunately I'm in a position where I let him get back up to half health, but also I get to bring in Togekiss and hopefully restore some of my HP too. Uh, so we get into a little miniature wish war right here, where we're both just making wishes about our hopes and our dreams and our, our desires to win the battle, the winning lottery numbers. We're just making a lot of wishes here, and that's okay. What's important is that the HP goes back up like we both need. Uh, I really need to get Weavile on the field safely at some point. Uh, as long as Weavile is above 40% mm, HP, I can live a fake out from Law Punny. And then from there, I can hit everything that he has except for Sylveon and one hit KO for the most part. Uh, Bronzong, of course, doesn't like knockoff. Weavile can hit uh, Umbreon with a low kick and do about 80%, 80 to 70%. And then of course I can use Icicle Crash to a KO Sylveon. And after a fake out, I can KO the um, Law Punny with an ice, ice Shard. So I just basically need to get my Weaver on the field at some point. He also doesn't have entry hazards up yet. So if I have an opportunity to uh, Baton Pass a Wish to my Darmanitan, that's going to work out pretty well for me, too. I actually missed out on an opportunity to do so, as he brings in Sylveon on my Togekiss right here. Unfortunately, since he brought it in at such a good time for him, that means I have to let Troop take a Hyper Voice right to the face. And seeing this damage tells me that it is definitely uh, Specs, because that did a lot of damage. And Troop is very bulky overall. I don't think I have any offensive investment on Troop at all for this battle. Now, he does go back on into Bronzong, and here is where I was like, okay, last time he went for Psychic, so I'm just going to stay in here and knock him off. And so I do knock him off, and surprisingly he has the Colbert Berry, 
which of course decreases the damage from uh, dark type attacks. I get a crit, but it doesn't really matter because he has the Clover Berry, and even without the crit, it wouldn't have knocked him out. I couldn't have knocked him out with two knockoffs, so it doesn't really matter. Here, I was hoping that he would go for Psychic, which is why I went into Togekiss, but he sets up Stealth Rocks. I definitely should have gone into Darmanitan right there. Uh, it, that would have been such a great play to go into Darmanitan, because then I could have gone for Flare Blitz, and I may have died to the recoil, but then Darmanitan would have at least gotten a KO, and I would have taken out the Bronzong as he set up the Stealth Rocks. Instead of now, he gets Stealth Rocks up, he gets the damage Togekiss with Gyro Balls. Just annoying all around to deal with it in this regard, so it would have been a much better switch to just go right on to Darmanitan. Uh, and of course, I couldn't risk switching in Weavile because he could hit Weavile with a Gyro Ball and kill it because Weavile is so fast. Uh, and if he's clearly running a minus speed bronze on because I have a minus speed Mega Venusaur and I'm outspeeding him. So I do get Wish on the Venusaur since I couldn't save my Darmanitan. I had to have Venusaur at high HP because that's the only way that I could take on uh, Mega Law Punny is make sure that I can take at least two returns in case I have to bring in Venusaur on a return. Uh, but fortunately, since I did bring Knockoff on Venusaur, I have a way to hit Bronzong at the very least. I actually put that move on Troop right before the battle started, so that worked out really nicely. Uh, Umbreon's going to come back out, and that means we might have some more annoying Wish shenanigans. Uh, but that's okay, because I can just try to switch in on a Protect, and in the meantime, while I'm trying to force him to Protect, I can hit him with Sludge Bombs, and maybe I'll Poison him. That's mainly why I just stayed in and went for the Sludge Bombs. I get a crit, but... It doesn't matter, I can't KO him with another one. And unless I get the poison, I would basically need a poison and a crit in order for any other crits to matter. So here I figure, okay, he's probably gonna go for Wish again. Let's use his opportunity to go out in a Weavile and uh, low kick him in the face. I want to show him that I have the low kick to try to force him to switch. Uh, I was hoping to, to lure in the Sylveon here um, as he sees my low kick on hopefully a Protect. If he doesn't Protect, I don't mind low kicking him in the face and taking out uh, a good 70% of his HP. But now that he's seen it, I know that a Icicle Crash on the Umbreon followed by a low kick will be enough to take out the Umbreon. And if he switches, I can catch Sylveon with an Icicle Crash. So he actually does switch out to Sylveon. Icicle Crash is just waiting for it. I felt really good about that prediction because I kind of had him in a little bit of a check position right there. So he switches out into Sylveon, takes the Icicle Crash, it's going to do well over 50%, probably more like 65 or so. And that means I just need to hit him with another Icicle Crash, but I miss, and then I get blasted away with a Hyper Voice. So unfortunate, because now that changes the entire battle. I don't have anything to pick off Mega Lop Honey with. I don't have really a reliable way to KO the Umbreon. Um, now Venusaur comes in, has to take unnecessary damage from Stealth Rocks, which is pretty huge. Uh, I KO the Sylveon, which is nice, even with the minus speed nature, which is interesting. But now he can just bring in the Law Punny and just wreck my remaining Pokemon. Uh, being a fighting type, he takes reduced damage from Stealth Rocks. And I was just, I, I knew I had to take a, a fake out here, so I decided to sacrifice Darmanitan. And I was hoping that after the Stealth Rock damage, Venusaur could live a return. But having to take that extra turn of Stealth Rock damage since I missed the Icicle Crash on Sylveon, means that Troop will not be able to take a return. And this is just really unfortunate, uh, because now when I bring in Togekiss and it takes Stealth Rock damage, it's going to be below 40% HP, and Togekiss definitely can't take a return from that amount of HP. And even if I could take it, then I'd have to contend with Umbreon and we'd have a terrible Wish stall game at the end. So I basically lost that battle because of that Icicle Crash miss, but that that's the way the cookie's gonna have to crumble for week seven. Uh, I think actually at the end of week seven, I had lost something like eight battles in a row, and I'm actually still on a losing streak. So we're going to try to break that losing streak this week. Uh, week eight is gonna be up against the, <clears throat> the Rydia Rhyhorn, I think. I think that's who it is. No, 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 no. That's right, I remember the logo. It's the Rydia Rydons. I think I'm pronouncing that name right. Either way, it's the... I think it's gonna be his... His... I don't think he's lost any battles. If he has, he's only lost one. So I'm up against a really impressive opponent when I'm trying to think of it. It's the Riyadh... 
right on, excuse me. So I actually just off, just got off work, which is why my voice is a little bit tired, and having a really bad sinus headache, but I am quite happy to be uploading again. Just life has kind of, kind of beat me down over the past few weeks, which is why I wasn't uploading. But I'm really happy to be back. I hope you guys are happy that I am back. And be sure to stay tuned for more LBA battles. And I will be uploading my first two weeks of the ABL, which is another league that I joined. Um, I'll be uploading those soon too. So we're going to get everything caught up. Things to look forward to on the channel. Starting up the, the uploads again. And I hope you guys continue to enjoy the videos. I'll talk to you later. Have a great day, guys. Bye now.